Before this video starts, here's a quick reminder that I still have to buy the Netherlands shirt with Verstappen's name on the back if the Netherlands win the Euros. And they're through to the quarterfinal, but depending when I upload this video, they could be through to the semis or... Turkey or Turkey, however you pronounce it. Max Verstappen, the best driver on the grid right now, according to most people, including me, before you start a war in the comments. Anyways, Verstappen is in the progress of his 10th season in F1, and the guy's only turning 27 years old. So in today's video, I've decided to rank every single season Max Verstappen has finished because the current season is still in progress. So here we go, starting with 2015. Now this is Verstappen's first season in F1 right off his season in F3, which caused a lot of controversy at the time which led to F1 introducing a minimum age of 18 years old. So another Verstappen situation won't happen again. But where would I put 2015? Well, he demolished Carlos Sainz in the standings and he also became the youngest point scorer in F1 history, scoring his first points at the Malaysian Grand Prix. Finishing P7 with Carlos Sainz in P8 and both Red Bulls in P9 and P10. Yes, Red Bull were that bad in 2015 that they were getting beat by their junior team. Some other notable things that happened in 2015 for Verstappen like that incident with Grosjean in Monaco and probably the thing most people remember in 2015 for the Singapore Grand Prix. Okay, we need to swap positions. No! Max, just do it. He was also really close to getting a rookie podium at the Hungarian Grand Prix finishing 4th, 19 seconds behind Daniel Ricciardo. I think he would have finished on the podium if Ricciardo pit for damage on this front wing, but he didn't. He held on to the end after his collision with Nico Rosberg. My personal opinion, people probably wouldn't agree with this. I'll put it at the A tier. Oh, lag for a bit. Next, 2016. 2016 for Verstappen started a bit rough at the Australian Grand Prix, having a back and forth with his engineer telling Carlos to let him by so he can overtake Bottas. The whole is on the front and I'm pulling away and now you don't have me pass. It's a joke, really. Yeah, it was a disaster that race. But you scored points, so that's good. The next race, he finished P6 in Bahrain, a, l a position ahead of Danny Kvyat. And Kvyat got lapped. Verstappen finished the entire 57 laps. And this was the beginning of... Does Kvyat really deserve a place in Red Bull or should Verstappen have it? Well, in the next race, Kvyat got a podium. We all know what happened in the Russian Grand Prix. And in the next race in Spain... Daniel, we've all seen the statement from Red Bull about why this move was made, but what are you telling yourself about it and where you go from here? And what happened in Spain? The smiles will be out at 18 years and 227 days old. Max Verstappen wins a Formula One Grand Prix, wins the Spanish Grand Prix. So it was a great start for Verstappen and Red Bull, but, but Sebastian Vettel should have won that race. I think Ricardo also should have finished second because they put the number one drivers on the two stop and they put the number two drivers on the one stop. Kind of like the 2010 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. 2016 was pretty smooth sailing for Verstappen until the Hungarian Grand Prix. Here both right and they're back to left when I was going there. And thus started the Mad Max campaign. First of all, you know, he's shouting on the radio like a child. It is just like a child. And the United States is where it takes the piss. Yes, I know the US Grand Prix happened before Mexico, but I wanted to make that compilation. So it, I, it makes sense for me to add Mexico there. Because even though he DNF due to a gearbox failure, he won driver of the day. Kind of like what happened at the Austrian Grand Prix earlier this week when, although Norris retired, he still won driver of the day for some reason. I think Alonso should have won it because he started P12 and he finished P4. I mean P5 actually, sorry. But hey, at least he redeemed himself in Brazil. And this save, which yeah, 
Great save. So, where will I rank 2016? Well, obviously, he showed a lot of moments of brilliance. This is also when the glorified Pastor Maldonado allegations started popping up. So, I'll have to put this at the B tier. Because of the many questionable things that he did this year, I couldn't bring myself to put it at the A tier. So yeah, B tier. Now, 2017 for Max Verstappen. He started off the season by holding off Lewis Hamilton in the Australian Grand Prix, which caused Lewis Hamilton to lose P1 to Sebastian Vettel. And the Chinese Grand Prix, that was a brilliant recovery drive from P16 to finish on the podium. So nothing bad to say about that here. And Verstappen wasn't really anywhere to be seen until the Hungarian Grand Prix mainly because of reliability issues and just him driving like prime Yuji Ide. But at Hungary, that was peak Yuji Ide. He had a collision with Daniel Ricciardo which caused him to have some radiator damage and ultimately Ricciardo retired from the race. That was just a really dumb move. I don't know why you'd do that. You're clearly understeering into him. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't make sense why he went for that at turn 2. Hey, at least he got a stop and go, I believe. 5 seconds, 10 seconds stop and go. A DNF from the Belgian Grand Prix. Yeah, reliability hit Renault hard in 2017 and the next year, 2018 as well. Italy wasn't that good from Max either. He finished a lap down. We all know what happened in Singapore, but Malaysia would have a turnaround of luck. You see, after Kvyat was dropped for Verstappen at the 2016 Russian Grand Prix, Verstappen won the race in Spain. Kvyat was dropped after the Singapore Grand Prix for the crash at turn 7, which could have been easily avoidable if he just went on the runoff area instead of forcing himself into the corner. And he was also down on the points on Pascal Verlein, who was carrying that tractor of a sour and so yeah he got rightfully dropped after singapore and in malaysia max verstappen wins the grand prix and takes the malaysia grand prix for red bull mercedes were having a disaster class of a race and ferrari had reliability issues of their own and he won that race Kvyat returned for the United States Grand Prix and we all know what happened to Verstappen in that race. He got a penalty for um, overtaking Raikkonen off the track. But Kvyat scored points but was dropped for some reason. I don't know why he was dropped after this race. He scored a point. Finished ahead of Brendan Hartley. But we all know what happens when Kvyat is dropped. Verstappen won the Mexican Grand Prix. And I think it was a questionable win because of the lap one incident i think verstappen was partially to blame for that but hey a win is a win you can't hate lewis hamilton finished a lap down and seb finished a minute and 10 seconds off the of max verstappen and he also lost a championship that race that's pretty much all the talk about of verstappen from 2017 I don't think this was a great year. 168 points is not great. Yes, reliability was involved. Yes, he got two wins. But in both of those wins, the main competitors were out of contention the whole race. So I'm going to have to rank 2017 a step below 26. Stop lagging. A step below 2016. 2018 of Max Verstappen, one of my least favorite versions of Max Verstappen, mainly because of the Chinese Grand Prix and the Japanese Grand Prix. He did get two wins as well in Austria and Mexico. It should have been three because of what happened in Brazil, but eh. And there also wasn't really that much dirty driving this year apart from what I mentioned already. He finished fourth only two points behind Raikkonen and two points ahead of Bottas which is really impressive but he didn't really have that much reliability issues compared to his teammate Daniel Ricciardo. I mean just look at this. I can't really think much of 2018 for Verstappen because most of the time it just felt like he wasn't there. So yeah I don't think it's as bad as 2017 but I think it's also quite impressive from him that year. He prevented Lewis Hamilton from winning the championship in the United States. So we'll put 2018 at the B tier and also that recovery drive in Monaco that was yeah that was really good now we look on to the 2019 season for Max Verstappen I think it's an S tier we'll rank it first I think it's an S tier he got his first pole position at the Hungarian Grand Prix it was a race long fight with Lewis Hamilton but if it was a track at let's say Great Britain Lewis would have won that easily it's way too hard to overtake in Hungary it's basically Singapore but in permanent racetrack form many standout moments moments throughout the year as well had the battle with Charles Leclerc in Great Britain, Monaco with this collision at the Nouvelle Chicane, the German Grand Prix somehow winning that race even though he had a spin, and getting his 2018 revenge at the Brazilian Grand Prix. Overall a great 
season from Verstappen. If Red Bull had a better strategy in the Hungaro ring, he probably would have won one more race this year, but it's still a great year from Verstappen. Next, 2020. He only finished 9 points behind Bottas in the fastest car in F1 history, compared to his teammate Alex Albon, who had a disaster class of a season. We all know Max should have finished second in the in the standings this year, but but reliability issues like in Austria. I don't count the British Grand Prix because his tires also might have exploded if he didn't pit. All the Italian races. If these four cases went to plan, he would have finished ahead of Bottas in the standings. So yeah, he should have finished second, he finished third. Overall, great season for him. I might put this in the middle of S and A. How do I say this? So for me, it's a very, very borderline S tier. 2021. I don't really have to talk about 2021, do I? Um... Yeah. He finished first and second every time he had a race where nothing went wrong. So, for example, in Hungary, he finished, I think, P8? Can't really remember. He finished P8, but he had floor damage that race. So in the races where nothing went wrong, he finished first or second. And he was also ultra aggressive this year. People say it's hard racing, but in Saudi Arabia, that was, that was really questionable. Also unlucky on a lot of incidents like the Azerbaijan Grand Prix and the British Grand Prix, which I'm not going to say who's at fault because I don't want to cause a world war in the comments. 2021 S tier, I don't really have to talk about it. So yeah, but let me just give him a switch around. Yeah, that's right. Time for 2022. This one, even though he won 16 races, I don't really know if I can put it at S tier because the title fight died way too early. There was a regulation change mid-season which favored Red Bull a lot because they didn't have issues with porpoising. Thank you Mercedes for ruining the 2022 season. It's not Verstappen's fault, but it is gonna be taken into account. And he had a few disaster class races like in Singapore, Brazil. So I don't really know if I can put this at the S tier. So I'll just put this at the A tier, but like a really, a really high A tier. Why is it so laggy? And lastly, 2023. Do I need to say anything else? Instant S tier. That was his greatest season of his career. Winning 10 races in a row. That's mad. I don't think that will be replicated anytime soon. Although we did say that about Sebastian Vettel back in 2013. So we'll just wait and see, I guess. And again, just like 2021, I don't really have to talk about 2023 a lot. We all know what happened. And it's also really recent in our memories. So that will do it for today's video. Let me know which driver you want me to do with next. Probably Lewis Hamilton, maybe Sebastian Vettel. We'll see. And also let me know if I should do more real life F1 content because all I do here is gaming. Anyways, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and goodbye.